All right, John Gabbana. How's it going? What's going on, man? Chilling, eating. I just came on. Uh, I came straight to this interview from training, so I got to feel the body. Provided with nutrients and protein. That's what I'm doing right now. What are you training for? Uh, I, I started boxing six months ago. So I got two fights under my belt, two and no. I have another fight coming up. And uh, so I fought Supreme Patty my first fight. And ever since, I just I just stuck with the boxing. And uh, I mean, it's, it's good. I, um, I lift weights first. Then in the same day, I go and train and sharpen up them, sharpen up these hands, these holy hands. So it's like uh, I wanted to I wanted to keep with it ever since after my first fight, because I'm like, man, this is good for my mental, this is good for the body, this is good for my soul, for my spirit. So uh, so for the past six months, I just been in the gym. I'm in shape now, nah, because I wasn't taking care of my body years ago. All them drugs I was doing and everything like that, I was just letting myself go. But now nah, I'm like. Shh. This the best. This the best form I ever been. So I just, I just stick to it. Now I got discipline and structure in my life. So, uh, you know, I really didn't want to miss a meal. So I was just like, you know, I could eat while I do this interview. <laughs> oh, that's all good. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. Definitely, definitely, man. You know, it's good to see you. You doing good. I know. Uh, you know, I, I remember seeing you. Uh, your first boxing match. And now you you said you've done two total, and you have a third one coming up. Yeah, um, supposedly I'm supposed supposedly I'm supposed to be fighting Aaron Carter. You know who that is? Yep. So he reached out, and uh, he want to fight me or whatever. But so supposedly so in May we supposed to have a fight coming up. But I'd be having a few people reach out, but um, I'm taking it day by day. Just I'm just stick to training. Whoever I fight next, you know. I'm gonna lay these hands on them. It's gonna, it's gonna be what it is. I'm gonna be ready. That's what it is. How much are you working out? Uh, three times a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I do two training sessions. But before, I used to train every single day. I used to box Monday, weight lift Tuesday, box Wednesday, weight lift Thursday, box Friday, weight lift Saturday, Sunday church, Monday repeat. I used to do that. But I'm like, uh, that was wearing my body out. So I'm like, I do now I do two training sessions in one day for three days, had the rest of the week off for me to do whatever I got to do. Probably go on a bridge run, go to the gym, do a little cardio just so I can stay active. But other than that, um, it's three, three times a day. I mean, three, three days a week, two in one day. How'd you like the boxing the first time you did it? Um, I was a bit nervous just because it's like when you boxing, it takes skill. You can't you can't go in a boxing ring. You can't fight a fighter that knows the technique, street fighting style. So it's like somebody could probably come at me street fighting style. I know how to slip and get out the way, you know, and then count on them. So it's just like uh, I wasn't. At first, it's like I was a little nervous because I ain't know uh, if I I ain't want to look silly in a fight without knowing the fundamental. But uh, man, I did good for three weeks of training. My first fight, I had three weeks of training, 20, 22 days, and uh, I look I look good. So I'm like, uh, man, this um, I feel like you know, I feel like this is my calling. It's like God have his way of pushing his people to to what? To his plan, to his calling, you know? Because it's like we all have purpose in our life, each and every one of you got a purpose. She have a purpose. My girl have a purpose. He have a purpose. If we are alive at this point in time in life, I mean, at any point, if once we conceived out of our mama womb, we got purpose. So it's like, I feel like this is my purpose. So I'm going to stick with it. Man, that's what's up, man. You know, it takes a lot for uh, celebrities to get in the boxing ring. A lot of times, you know, dudes don't really want to do it. They might be scared they're going to lose or, you know, scared that, you know what I'm saying, that things ain't going to work out their way. But, you know, that's really dope when dudes can get in the ring and, and just handle it, you know, like men. And Yeah, I think I think it takes a lot for anybody to get in the ring, you know, because, uh, <laughs> shoot, <laughs> y'all both, 
both men putting y'all health at risk, putting y'all bodies at risk. So when people be going to war, bloody nose, broken nose, or injuries can happen, all type of stuff, black eyes, cuts and everything. So it's like, I think it's, um, but I got the heart for it. I got a heart of a line. God said he don't give us a spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. So it's just like, I use the word of God just to, you know, like, just to give me strength and to keep on going. But it, it's all been a process though. Cause it's like, man, I used to, when I first started training, like when we spar, excuse me, when I first started sparring, I used to, I, I bloodied a few people's nose and I used to want to not spar no more, I used to feel bad. But then at the same time, they keep fighting and then I get injured for want to just let off and go a little softer. But it's like my mind been transforming. And it's like, even past that, you know, we are woke. So the bell keep, the bell going, fight. So it's just like, um, man, I think it's, it's transforming me. It's making me, uh, but it's also humbling because it's like, no matter how good you think you are, it's somebody else who's better. Um, but, you know, all work, good work. So, uh, man, I think it's, it's, it's strengthening me, not only like in the, not only like as a, as a fighter, but in life too, just as a man. So, Man, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's dope to see you doing good like that, man. Especially finding something that you're passionate about, you know? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Well, I thought we'd get into your whole story, you know, being that this is our first time working. I think, uh, you know, you have a really, you know, great story, you know what I'm saying? Even from the low points all the way to the high points. I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're doing the Christian thing and, and everything and... You know, I think it's kind of, I think it's inspiring for people to see somebody to come from, uh, you know, such a place where you were at to, you know what I'm saying, to make it to such a good spot. So can you tell me a little bit about what it was like for you growing up? Yeah. Um, so I'm born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, growing up, my dad wasn't in my life. Uh, he was, you know, in and out of prison. My stepdad. Uh, he was there since I was little, since I know him. But so I'm the only child out of my mom and my dad. But my mom had five other kids with another man, my stepdad. And my dad got seven other kids with two other women. He got six with one and another with another lady and then me with my mom. But it was crazy. So I used to see my parents, my, my dad, my stepdad fight. My mom, my stepdad used to fight all the time. That's all I seen in the house, fist fights. My mom on top of my mom used to be big back in the day. So I used to see my mom just choke out my dad, punching him, man, just all fighting each other. You know what I'm saying? man? My, and then it's like, that's all I seen. And I don't know if my mom had like attitude. I know she used to pop pills and everything like that. So like she had like anxiety and stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what she had to be honest with you. But uh, I remember like, uh, we driving on the highway, my stepdad driving, my mom, like, she, I she would kill herself. She would jump out the car right now. She hanging out the door. My dad, my stepdad trying to pull her back in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen, like, that's that's the type of household I grew up in. Uh, shoot, my mom used to, I seen my mom get on top of my little sister, like, probably, like, she was, like, six, eight years old, something like that, choking her, saying she wished she never was never here and stuff like that. Shoot, I was probably, like, 10, 12 years old. My mom had smacked me so hard. Uh, I fell on the ground and my tooth came out. It's like, you know what I'm saying? My mom was like, very abusive. She was very abusive. But after my stepdad, my stepdad died of cancer in 2014. And then uh, my mom was left, you know, by herself to raise six kids. So it's like birthdays, holidays, all stopped when I was 14 years old. When it was two parents, it was much easier for them. You know, my dad, my stepdad worked a good job. He was a jeweler. So, uh, you know, they had us in sports. We was in Christian school and all that. But once he died, like everything got worse. It's like we had to like now fend for ourselves. And uh, so we went from my mom. She used to like she would take us in grocery stores. Um, we'd eat in the grocery store, whatever we can. Or she would hurry up, pack up all the groceries. We dip out the store. We used to go dumpster diving behind Win Dixie, Publix. Uh, we used to go to food drives and everything like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I used to have to eat food out of the dumpster, my mom, and then go home. I mean, go to, when I, we, we went to school, you know, back then when I was a kid, uh, I was, 
people used to get picked on for eating free lunch. And so, uh, but when I ain't had no bread to eat, pay for lunch, so I used to not eat lunch at all. I used to be hungry as hell, not eat lunch at all. And then when we did, when we went to Christian school, the only way you do eat lunch, if you bring a lunch or you pay lunch. I remember uh, they giving me a free gift card because, you know, they seen I was missing out on lunches. Like, uh, so they they like, they provided food for me, you know what I'm saying? But it's, uh, shoot, my mama stopped taking care of me. I used to wear my stepdaddy hand-me-downs, USPA, big ass clothes, you know what I'm saying? Like, shoot, that's the type of lifestyle I grew up in. That's what my household looked like. Go home, get, you know, my mama don't, house not clean or whatever, we all get punched on. We getting beat with the buck, beat with the belt buckle, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, uh, shoot, my mama, uh, she the type, not the type, this, she did do this. She had, she'll get mad at one of us, she'll be on the highway while we all kids. Said she'll kill everybody in the car, she wish she never had us, she'll kill us and her, you know what I'm saying? Said she'll drive us off the bridge, Matthew's bridge, big ass bridge. You know what I'm saying? As a, as a kid, like, bro, I used to think I had to kill my mom before she killed me. She put that type of fear in my heart. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I ain't even, I ain't think I ever loved my mom. I, th- I was scared of her. And I think she she did, most of all she did, because she always mentioned, if I if I ain't going to jail, I just like this, and I did She always talking about how she wanted to run away and uh, and leave us behind. She made me feel like I wasn't supposed to be here. Like, like I asked to be here. And, um, but she did that with all, the, and she was hard, she was harder on me because I'm the oldest. So she was like, I'm supposed to be setting the example of stuff like this, couldn't leave. Uh, couldn't leave the crib, couldn't have friends, couldn't grow out my hair, uh, stuff like this. So, uh, shoot, yeah, that's the type of household I grew up in. Man, dog, that sounds like rough, man. Crazy, dog. Like, man, is is there like any particular situation that stands out the most from that time? Uh, I mean. Shoot, one time my mom bought a gun. She liked belts. She said, I'm gonna stop belts. Y'all not getting beats with belts no more. This gun is y'all, uh, this gun is y'all punishment. Or or uh what she said, this, this gun is y'all discipline. She had a little pink pistol. And she, she was like, she gonna discipline with that, not belts no more. Did you take her serious when she said that? Or- Hell yeah, I took her serious. I have a three-year-old son. If I tell my son I'm gonna kill him, he gonna be scared. He not going to understand what's going on. He's a child. I was a child going through that. So hell yeah, I was scared. And the rest of my brothers were scared too. But I used to plot on having to go in, her, wait till my mama's sleep. I used to stay up, not go to sleep. Cause she talking about something. I kill, how you know I don't, how you know I don't be plotting to kill y'all while y'all sleep? She used to watch this show. What a mom's, uh, I forgot the show, uh, what it's called. It's uh, Snap. It's a show called Snap. Well, moms, they go, they just lose their shit and they kill their whole family. Man, she like, she be all, that was her favorite show. She used to watch that. She like, uh, uh, how you know I won't end up like these moms? How you know I don't just talk on y'all while y'all sleep and kill y'all while y'all sleep? Man, I used to stay up in the middle of the night at 15 years old, making sure that she don't come in there and kill me. And I used to plot like, how can I kill her? You know what I'm saying? Like, I should, like, but I, I didn't have a heart. I didn't have that heart. But I was so scared, like. I'm like, it, I'm glad I got, like, I'm glad I was kicked out at a certain time because, like, I literally used to sit in my room and plot on killing my mom before she killed me. That's how she made me feel. Like, she's scared. Like, she's scared. Me. You know what I'm saying? So it's, um, that's a lot on the child. It's like, at at a teenage years, yeah, at, at a teenage, as a teenager, yeah, that's, that's a really a lot. And it's like, I could see the anger in her eyes. I can see the hatred in her eyes, and she always how used to mention like how I look like my dad. So it's like that's even worse, and she that's why uh, I felt like I got it kind of bad too, a little worse because I look like my dad. Excuse me. So, but hell yeah, I took her serious. How do you think that affected you growing up? Man, it affected me a lot. That's exactly why I was acting like I was acting when I first got famous, because I was hurt, I was angry. I ain't, I didn't have no no guidance. I was lost. You know what I'm saying? That's why I acted like that. That's the answer right there. Did you play any sports? Yeah, I played sports. I played football. I played track. I played baseball. My um when my stepdad when my stepdad was alive, 
he had us really on. Um, he had us in sports. So, uh, so that was good. But when he passed away, that's when everything got bad. At what point did you start rapping? Shoot, when he passed away. Well, probably like 17. And then, um, but it's like, even then, the music that I, the music that I put out there when I first came out, man, it was like, it really wasn't me. That was me desperate, trying to, just trying to get a quick bag. Just, you know, put myself out there any type of way. But it's like, like, if people see me now or people around me now, I have a disciplined lifestyle. I have a structured lifestyle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really on my stuff. Because, uh, it's like, it's like now I'm focused. Like I'm focused on becoming the best version of me. Be, uh, focus on knowing who God is because God gave me purpose, man. God gave me life, man. It's like, it's like I have so much stuff to worry about. I have so much stuff that I could be stressed out about. But because I know God said that everything work out for the good of those who love Him, and and called according to His purpose, man, I keep a smile on my face. But I know, but I know, like. To stay disciplined in what I do, and and uh, it's like you know it's gonna some the good is gonna come out of it. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, you know that's that's good to see. You know you coming from such a, a rough a rough place, man. That yeah, and it's like when I when I first came up, like I was scared to talk about this stuff because I didn't know how a celebrity is supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, I was scared to tell my mom. I wanted to so bad, but I was so scared. And then when I first got on, like I was scared to open up like this. I was scared to be how would I, how would I be looked to the public? I was scared, like. But now, nah, but I don't care about none of that because I've been through so much. Even while being famous, famous sleeping on another kid on 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 a friend couch, famous not being able to take care of myself, famous and not stuff stuff going right. But it's like I'm so solid right now. Niggas going they gonna have to know what I've been through. Because for me to have what I have now and for me to carry myself with a smile every day, it took a lot. It took a lot. So the whole world need to know. Definitely, man. It's definitely, you know, you have definitely did a complete 180, man. And that's that's good shit, man. At what point did you come up with the name Boot Gang? Uh, my mom, she, she nicknamed me Boot when, when I was born. And I always used to ask my mom, I used to ask her, like, where you came up with Boot? You know, I never really liked the name Boom because it didn't have no it didn't have no meaning. And then uh when we used when I used to go to school, everybody called me John. I mean that's my name. So everybody called me John. Then when my family get around, because Boom started out as, as a family nickname. It is a family nickname. So when my family get around, uh, I went to school with my brothers and sisters. When they get around, they'd be like, boom, 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 boom. People used to be like, what what they call you? What it, what it, what she say? Bonk, bonk. And I used to go home and ask my mom. I'm like, why did you come? Why did you why did you name me Boom? Like, where did that come from? She like, she don't know. She was like, when I was born, when I was first born, that was the first thing she called me was Boom. Hey, my little Boomy Boom. Hey, Boomy Boom. My little Boomy Boom. So um, like when I decided that I was I wanted to rap, uh, I was trying to figure out a name like what to call myself, and uh, I couldn't think. I couldn't think of a name. I was like, wanted to use. I wanted to use my name. Uh, my name is John Robert Hill Jr. And I wanted to use my name some type of way, but I couldn't think of nothing. So I'm like, man, f it. I'ma just use Boom. And I start thugging with that. And then uh, me trying to be a rapper, I'm like, damn, it's so hard to get a fan base. But I'ma do something crazy and get famous. If I get famous, then I can do whatever I want. Now. I had so much faith that I get famous that I became famous without have without having a plan. It came so it came too fast. I wasn't ready for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't had no type of plan. All I knew was if I get famous and that, and that's not how it worked. You know? So it's like plus I was 20 years old. I was 20 going on 21 when I got famous. But so my name boom start buzzing. My name boom start buzzing. But this is how this is how the game came in. Fat boy SSE, he blew it before me. So I took what he did, and I'm like, oh, if he could get famous, then I could get famous too. And he always used to say, it's fat boy game. So since I since I used to see what he did, I used to be like, F fat boy game, it's boom game. And that, and then I used to say that 
And then like it just caught and people start calling me Boonk Gang. And I wasn't never calling myself Boonk Gang. I was saying it's Boonk's Gang. But people called people call me that so much. I just was like, man, bump it. I'm gonna just roll with it. But now it's like, uh, <laughs> I ain't worried about that thing, nah. But how I think about it, nah. Since I'm uh, since I'm saved, man, it's all for the glory of God. When people see Boom Gang and they see me nah, they been like, oh yeah, God did that. Cause it's a big difference. How did your family feel when they found out you were doing the pranks and everything? Uh, my mom ain't like it. My family ain't understand. You know, they ain't know because it's like I come from. I don't. We don't. We don't know nothing about that. We didn't come from that side. It's like that's five years ago. Five years ago, the world was different. So it's like, uh, you know, my family didn't understand. My mom. I was I actually started when I was living with my mom. She kicked me out, so I was homeless while doing that. And I'm like, man, I just know one day that this is gonna change my life. Who were some of your musical influences growing up? Uh, Eminem. He was my biggest. Okay, and what was it about Eminem? Man, just his life and how raw he kept me. You know what I'm saying? I like how raw he is. So, uh, you know, he his life ain't perfect and everything like that, but that dude's so raw. I'm like, shoot, I, I like that, you know? And But that's how I am, I'm raw. Shoot, I ain't got nothing to hide, you know what I'm saying? I ain't been through, I ain't been through nothing I've been through for nothing, shoot. Okay, so you, you get kicked out of your house and I believe at around 20 years old, you end up moving into Miami? No, so what happened was at 19, I stayed in Jacksonville till I was 19, uh, at 19, no, Till I was 20, I believe. Yeah, till I was 20. So, um, because I'm, I went to school here and everything. Like, I'm from here. But I moved from home to Miami. So what happened was, on my last year, high, my my last high school year, we moved around. My high, I went to five high schools out of the four years. So on my last high school, my mom, she remarried. But her husband stayed in Miami. So she moved to Miami. And instead of transforming school, instead of transferring schools, she left us here in Jacks and let us stay with a friend, and because she don't want to transfer schools again, so it got to a point, you know, where her friend already got two sons. It got to a point where her friend told my mom to come get us. We can't live with her no more. So what happened was my mom she came and got us, but I was in the streets at another at a girl crib. So when I got home. I got home kind of late. My mom was there packing up the car and she said, hey, boom, since you want to run the streets and chase out the woman, you can stay here. And she left with my brothers and went to Miami. So uh, my dad came and he picked me up. But instead of living with my dad, I live with my aunt, his sister. Uh, I got a girlfriend and my girlfriend, when I got her, uh, it didn't work out with my aunt because I, you know, I was coming in late and everything like that. So my aunt said, I'm setting a bad example and I can't live with her no more. So I went with my uncle house, my mom brother. So uh, I started working with my uncle. My uncle do pools. He got he have his own pool business. So dating my dating my ex uh, at the time, my girl at the time, um, we had a baby. She had a miscarriage. The relationship ended. I said this was like at least a year. So I was in my teen. I was like nineteen. So uh, after the relationship ended, you know, I was heartbroken. Uh, time passed from 17 when my mom kicked out. My mom said I could live with her again. She still stayed in Miami with her husband. So I moved from home and went to Miami. And uh, when I went to Miami, my mom got me a job. Her husband got me a job. He worked, He's a, he owns his own business doing installation. So I was working at the Miami International Airport installing cubicles and desks for the people at the airport. And then at that time, I'm like, uh, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't think I should be doing this. Like it's something better in me. Like I feel my worth is more than just building the white man's cubicle. Like so, uh, around that time, Fat Boy SSE going on, and I did that. So I did the same thing, but my but my version. My mom found out. She kicked me out while I was in Miami. Now how I got mind you, how I got to Miami was a friend drove me halfway. Cause I didn't have no car, 
barely had money. I'm 19 years old. My friend drove halfway. My mom drove halfway and came and got me. So when I drove to Miami, I just got to Miami. Like, I just got a new job. I don't know nobody in Miami. I only moved down there because I'm heartbroken from my girl breaking up with me. So uh, probably like months down the line, I started doing the boot game stuff. My mom found out because the police got involved when my younger brother was recording me and he was underage at the time. So he, so she, uh, she had to find out. And then uh, when she found out that I was doing that on the internet, she said, I got to get at her house. So, uh, and, uh, and she told her husband to fire me so I couldn't work at his job no more. So I was on the streets. I was on the streets for some months. Damn, damn, man. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. What was like, what was your first prank? The Popeye's yeah. chicken prank? Shoot, I don't know if that was a prank, but cause that was that was legit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, take me through it, man. What what were you thinking when you when you thought up with the idea? Oh, honestly, to be real, um, I was on live. Now I was on live, and uh, when I was on live, cause I I like for some reason it just I always knew how to get like Instagram. Like before I even blew up, like when I was in high school. Man, I used to have like 10,000 10, followers, 20,000 followers. Then I'd go through pages. Just I just knew how to gain followers. So um, plus, you know, I'm cute and everything. So like I get followers. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm a handsome man. So like I know how to get people attention. So um I was on my live. Now I have a regular page. I'm on my live. And I'm like, man, hey, what's something y'all never seen before? Ever done? I do it. Somebody I seen there was commenting all type of stuff, but I, I seen a comment that stood out to me. It said, "Go in Popeyes and make your own chicken." The very <laughs> the very next day, I told my brother when he got out of school, I told him what I'm gonna do. So I walked. Now I ain't never done nothing like this before. So we walked to my we walked to Popeyes, which was like a thirty minute walk. Uh, we walked when we got there. Before I got in, I'm working myself up like. <sighs> Like, I'm going to really be mad. I'm not mad, but I just worked myself up. And then when I walked in, like, that whole, I, I walked in just snapping, cussing and everything, fixed my own chicken. And then I walked out. As I'm walking out, everybody, the whole crew following me. He parked across the street. Get him on camera. Get him on camera. He parked across the street. But we walked. We ain't even drove. We, nigga, we ain't got no car. So we we kept walking. But we got so far, they stopped following. They stopped uh, following and they talk, turn around. When they turn around, we start running. When we ran, we went to we went behind this U-Haul place. Uh, when we went behind the U-Haul, I uploaded it. When I uploaded it, uh, my sister, she took it off my Instagram account. No, she asked me to send her the video. I sent her the video. She posted on her Facebook because she thought it was so funny. So I, when she posted on her Facebook, it went super viral. It went so viral. I'm like, well, I'm on to something. And I started hitting everybody, everybody who posted it, the shade room, celebrities, all type of stuff. I started hitting them up like, yo, this is me, this is me, this is me, this is me. I used to get excited about doing that stuff. But ever since that video went viral, I said, man, I'm going to keep doing stuff like this. Because if I could get famous, then I could get rich. And again, don't work like that. Man, so you're making, you know, all the all these pranks and everything, you know. How, how soon after that did you do your next prank? Man, I used to, I used to, Sleep before I go to sleep. I used to think of what's next, cause it's like, it's like, with somebody like me, especially when War Star got going, it's like somebody like me, like that was big. Like I come from nothing. Like I literally come from having nothing. Going to school, everybody in gym class, when everybody in the gym check lockers for some new shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like I come from nothing. So it's like, to be that viral, it's like, I had a hunger for something. I'm like this will change my life. What you gonna tell me? How you gonna, what you gonna tell somebody like, even with my family not understanding, you know what I'm saying? Like me not having nothing, me used to sleeping at parks, me sleeping on floors, not having no bed, me not having no money to buy my own clothes, me having to wear hand-me-downs, me having to eat out the dumpster. How you gonna tell a nigga like me, no, or stop? What, you crazy. I just knew it in the back of my mind, like this junk gonna change my life. So I used to go to sleep thinking, what's next? What's some more dis disastrous stuff that I could do? But it's like, in doing that, it was it got so disastrous, it's like nobody didn't want to work with me and do business with me. But you see, I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know that. It's like 
I didn't I didn't know the stuff I was putting out there will affect how my business. And then it's like I didn't have no business marks, but I didn't have no business marks because it's like I ain't been through it. I'm just hungry. And then my hungry went from hunger to desperation. Cause I'm like, oh, I got the fame. Now I just need a million dollars. How do I get the million? And it's like, I never got the million. Not yet. <laughs> what was the first prank you got arrested for? Um, so let me tell you how that happened. All right, so uh so the Popeye's place, they called the police. When they called the police, so like I used to literally, me and my brother, we walked down 441 every just about every other day, walking down 441, just messing up stuff. Like I used to, like I say, I used to sleep on this. Like, what's the next disastrous thing I could do? Cause I'm still getting million, a hundred thousand. It started with fifty thousand, then it gets to eighty thousand, a hundred thousand, a hundred twenty thousand, twenty two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, one million. I'm like, but even watching my numbers grow like that, even when I had my first million followers, I still ain't make not one dollar off my Instagram. No, I just didn't know how. I didn't know how to make a dollar off my Instagram, and I had a million followers. So that was so that's I mean that that's why my desperation was coming because it's like I see my views going up, I'm getting followers, but why I'm not making no money? But um what happened was so since we since I used to plot on these videos, there's this one video where I went into Burger King and uh I I asked them to make my food. So I made my food and I jumped on the counter and I started screaming. And uh the people, they were so scared, they called the police. So when they called the police, uh, they came and I was like, hey, I don't have nothing against Burger King or the employees. I just do, you know, stuntman videos on Instagram. So I showed them my I showed them my Instagram and uh, the officer was like, hey, you can get arrested for this stuff. One of the videos was me taking the donuts out of, uh, out of Dunkin Donuts, a tray of donuts. And I was like, no, I gave them donuts back. She said, no, you are at the store with them. That's theft. You could you could get arrested for this. So they wrote me a trespass in that Burger King and they let me go. Now, um, I know that that officer at that time, she wrote a warrant for my arrest and, and she wrote like she wrote something on me because she the only one who had my name. Like I'm a nobody at this time. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a nobody. Nobody don't really, they don't know my real name. They know boom. They might know boom game or whatever I'm saying in the video. They, but they don't know who I was because I was just coming up. So nobody, my real name wasn't out there. And especially in Miami, I'm from Jacksonville. My my name not out there. So I know at that time, since she was just writing a trespassing thing on me and stuff like that, she seen, she seen more, I did more of these type of videos. I know she had something to do with my arrest. But what happened was after that, I did a prank on somebody uh, with my brother. So we was at the bus stop. I, get, I had a new pair of forces. I gave my brother his forces. I mean, I gave my brother my forces and I had him sitting at the bus stop and I had my other brother with me. He was recording. So there was this random dude sitting at the bus stop and uh, there was talk. my brother started a conversation with him. So as I was walking by, I stopped and I told, asked my brother, the man don't know he my brother. He just think, you know, they two kids at the bus stop. I looked down, I'm like, boy, them shoes look nice, boy, where you getting them shoes from? He like, my grandma gave them to me. Now they really my shoes, but it's a little, it's a little play going on. I say, boy, what size you are? Those look nice. He said, they're my size. And I start jacking them up, like, boy, let me get them, let me get them. And the man, he like, oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And so uh uh what's the name? Like we end up laughing and everything. And like, nah, we just playing, we just playing. And like, oh man, you can't do that to me. You can't do that to me. So we posted that video. Now, like a week later, uh, we in AutoZone. That same man who we played the prank on, I turn around, like I'm standing in line waiting to get my stuff. I turn around, that same man is standing behind me looking pissed off. He's so angry. He's so angry. He's like, hey man, I seen that video you posted me all on Facebook, man. You don't know what I got going on in my life. I got ruins and this and that, that, that. And the old man was ready to fight. So like I boot up, we arguing back and forth. He got this biker chain. Uh, he, he, he dropped the chain down. Um, like we ain't fight though, but he called the pol he called the police. So uh, I'm still at AutoZone because they was helping me with something. I don't know. But when the police get there, uh, 
me and my brother with me. He used to record all my videos, but he's I after this after this moment, I never let him record another video for me. That's how I came with the uh th and this is how I came with the style that I did. So um my brother, the police came and you know, we I told him the story, what happened and stuff. I'm like, man, I do pranks, but this man, you know, he got mad at me. We started fighting. I mean, not we was arguing and stuff like this, like he put out a chain and stuff like this. And then so she ran our ID and stuff, and we had a warrant. Both of us had a warrant for our arrest. My other brother was with me at that Burger King joint. So both of us had a warrant for our arrest. And this was my first. So we both, they both took us in. And uh they let him go. He was a minor. They let him go. Uh but he still had to go to court and I think he was on probation or something, but they let him go and they took me to jail. So um, that was the first time that I went to jail for everything. And then, uh, but when I was in there, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, I probably had like a couple hundred thousand followers at the time, but I'm in there, I'm like, man, I'm sitting here thinking like, one day this gonna pay off, you know what I'm saying? A little people knew me while I was in there, a, a, a couple people, probably like two, uh, the officer, cause my videos was going a uh, little viral and everything, but that was the first time I went to jail for everything, and that's that's honestly how. Man, you know, I I seen you do quite a few pranks, man. You know, I think I seen you jump on a a newsstand in New York. Uh, you know, I think I even seen one where you were like pretending like you were taking a dump at Home Depot. Uh, you know, stealing a dog. What do you think was like your most craziest, wildest prank from back in those days? Uh oh yeah. So that's how I said I came up with my style because after my brother got arrested, he got arrested for accessory. So when he got arrested, instead of having him record my videos, I start recording myself like this. That's how I came up with that. Cause uh I ain't had nobody else to record my videos, so I just did it myself. And uh I you know, I didn't want my brother to I didn't want to get my brother in trouble for something that I had, like, I had a vision and I, you know, I didn't want him to get in trouble, but, uh, there's this, there's this man, his name is Jimmy Day. He's in Miami. Uh, at, at the time of me blowing up, we, there's this tattoo shop in Miami that I used to always go to and he was there he was recording a music video. And he needed somebody to play a role in his music video, like getting a tattoo. So I played that role for him. And uh, I, I I talked to him afterwards and I'm like, hey man, look, I got a following on, on the ground. You know, I'm, I'm blowing up this and that. I'm like, look, if you ever need me, just hit me up. And I did that because I'm 21. No, I was 20 years old. Cause I really started blowing up at 21, but I was 20 years old. I see this man shooting a music video, got guns, got women, got cars. I looked up to that at the time because I'm 20, I'm in the world. So I looked up to that and I'm like, hey, if you ever need me, just hit me up. So now mind you, that was my first and last time, like first and last time seeing him at that scene. Now, the story that I just told you, when I, how I went to jail, I was in there for two weeks and I got bonded out. My mom ain't bonding me out. I was bonded out and I didn't know how. I just, I spent like, I, no, I spent like, I was in there like 16, 17 days. I was bonded out. And come to find out, Jimmy Day is the one who bonded me out. Now it's like, my life is like a sequence. I I only met Jimmy one time before that. So uh, he bonded me out. And I, I linked up, I linked back up with him probably like two weeks after. And, um, he was like, uh, I was like, man, how can I ever repay you? He like, man, just go to court. So uh, I went to court. Now, Jimmy, he took me under his wing because uh, since he bonded me out, you know, he wanted to make sure that uh, like I handled, I went to court and handled my stuff uh, because he could get in trouble if I didn't. So uh, what's the name? So he, you know, he, we linked up. He started taking me to clubs. This and all that, but I start, you know, I start feeling good, like okay, something coming along, okay. So now, uh, he t he looked at me, he like, man, boom, listen, man, you don't gotta destroy your life over this stuff. You don't have to give your life away, man. Start start faking these videos. He helped me fake a lot of these. I came up with the idea, but the phones, the dog, 
the machete. He helped me fake a lot of my videos. So at the beginning, they were all real? Yeah. yeah. And, and then towards like the middle is when you kind of started uh, faking them? Ever since. Okay, okay. Besides like the one you just mentioned, like the New York one. I just did that. Now that you've kind of changed your life around, do you regret doing all these pranks? No, I don't. You know, it's, um, I have a voice because of that. And it's like, my voice is more important than ever now, because when I speak, I come with a message. And it's not a message of my own, it's a message about God. And people need to know, you know, but it's like this, it's like, I started out with just pranks and I started out playing the character, but I was so desperate of making it, I actually became that character. I actually became what I was supposed to be, you know? So it's like, uh, in doing that, I made a lot of unwise decisions and uh, in front of the whole world, while I was getting so many views, while everybody looking at me, I'm just, you know, just not giving, not, not giving one damn, just don't put myself out there any type of way. Now, you know, though my plan ain't go as it is, God always had a plan from the start. So I don't regret nothing in the past because it's now God is going to use that for his glory. And that's all that matters. You had mentioned having millions of followers and still being broke. Yeah. You know, now, were you doing any promo for money or there was no other ways for you to make money? Now, this is what I'm saying. Now, after a certain point, probably like I thought I start making money after a certain point. So somebody hit me up. They was like, um, they pay me twenty five hundred dollars for a post. So it's just like this money, this money thing. I used to always post. Not that's how I started making money. That was probably like that's a little bit after I have hit my first million. Now I was getting bread, but you know, and so it got to a point where I was getting bread. I was getting bread enough bread to, uh, you know, pay for my car and get an apartment over a turn. But I started out staying in hotels, but I got my own apartment eventually. But I started making bread over a a period of time. I started making some money. But I was just making a lot of wrong decisions with it, and that's because I was a I was a kid who didn't never had nothing, and never had no guidance. So I started making a little money, but then it got to a time where I was like, you know, this um, these thousand of dollars that I'm making for a post, I felt like you know I should be making a little bit more, a lot more, because I'm like, shoot, as much fame that I got, like even still today, like I don't do not, like I don't put myself out there no type of way. I barely even be on the internet. But it's still, every time I step outside, so many p people still want some pictures and stuff. And it's like, uh, you know, and it's rapid. It's rapid as my gram was growing. I'm like, damn, why every time I got to do some promo for some money? Like, why can't I make money other ways? I'm like, I ain't even had no type of wisdom on nothing. Like, I ain't had no team. I know what I'm saying? My family not messing with me because they kicked me out. So I ain't got no support to really tell me like, oh, invest your money in this or put your money in this or put your money in that. So the money that I get, get, I'm buying shoes, I'm buying clothes, I'm spending on drugs, you know what I'm saying? And then when my Instagram got taken away from me, I was just left to live off what I got saved up. <laughs> so it was just like, uh, I was, after a certain time, I started making money, but I was making a lot of wrong decisions. A while back, I seen you on Vlad TV. Yeah. And in that interview, he asked you about being shot. Being and shot? You didn't, you didn't really want to talk about it in the interview. Yeah. Are you okay with talking about that now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, what all happened? Man, so what happened was um, I was, like, high. I was on, like, four or five Zannies. And, uh, but I was in a group chat. I used to be in a group chat with some people that I used to hang around. And, um... Uh, I, I like I didn't like the type of crowd I was hanging around because it's like it's like it's like I'm bro like I'm built different bro and like it's 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 really hard for me to hold my tongue when I see some when I see some flake stuff so I'm in a group chat I'm like man all y'all niggas in this group chat 
bees. Like, you know what I'm saying? I call them like, so, uh, the man, one of them like, man, I ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Man, I ain't no bee. And then, so I'm like, uh, I'm like, shoot, you wish to me and we can do something about it. You know, if you want or something like that. He like, man, I see you when I see you. All right, bet. So shoot, um, you know, time go by, probably like months go by, probably like, you know, but you know, I'm I'm high on some Zans, and then I pull up to one of we had a, a a mutual friend. I pull up to his crib, so I'm there. I heard bro on the way. I'm like, oh, I bet. You know, I'm high. I got my pistol on. I got my brother with me. I got a girl with me. So when he pull up, I'm like, man, what's up? All this? What's up? What's up with all that junk you was talking? You know, in the group chat. He like, man, boom, man, I ain't trying to fight, man, I ain't trying to do this, I ain't do that. You know what I'm saying? He said, he see the gun on me. He said, man, you got your gun on you. So I give it to my brother. I'm like, man, what's up? Now I just, I just steal off on him. So people, everybody trying to break it up, break it up and all that. He, he dip, he go and step my brother. Oh, so what happened was, uh, I, I get a gun to my brother. When I get a gun to my brother, he cocks it back. And so I, I steal off on him. You know what I'm saying? He don't want to fight and all this like that. And then he run up, he go in the house, run upstairs. Everybody trying to break it up. And I'm like, man, let's go. No, I'm texting him first. I'm texting him. I'm like, man, come downstairs, man. We ain't going to shoot you. We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do that. that. He's like, nah, man, I don't want to fight, man. Just leave me alone. I'm like, all right, bet. So we did. As we leaving, uh, my brother hand me the gun back. So, you know, I get in the passenger seat. He get in the driver's seat. The girl get in the back seat. Because I'm leaning. Like, I'm on like four or five bars. So while we driving, he driving. You know what I'm saying? I'm leaning. I think I'm trying to fumble with the seatbelt and everything. All I hear is, "Bah!" And then I shot myself. Ah, man. Yeah. And then it's like my, I remember my ears ringing. Like, and I'm like this. I'm like, did I shoot myself? Cause I'm so high, I'm I'm on like so many zans. I'm like, I just shoot myself. I look down. I'm like, oh, I'm bleeding. I look at my brother, I say, bro, I shot myself, bro. And then, like, they just start going crazy in the car. Whereabouts in your thigh did you shoot yourself? Uh, it went through, it went, actually, it went through my leg and it hit my calf. Oh, damn. Mm. So everybody kind of starts going crazy and, and I take it you guys go straight to the hospital? Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing the pictures of you, you know, bleeding and everything. I think the first picture we seen is you were in the car, your jeans were bleeding. Yeah. And then I believe the second uh, video or picture we seen, you're, you're in a hospital bed and, and you look, you know, pretty bad. Yeah, so what happened was we went to the hospital, the police came and everything like that. They like, uh, well, it looked like you shot yourself. And I was denying it and everything like that and all, and all that. But uh, what happened was my brother, he dipped, he took my car, he got it clean, got every, he got the car clean. Uh, it was so much blood, <laughs> but he got the car clean. Uh, so the, the hospital, they supposed to stitch me up or whatever like that. No, they, they patched me up or something, stitch it up and everything. And then the next day, uh, I came, I left, but as I'm leaving, like I started bleeding again. So uh, I had to go back and they patched me up some more and everything like that. Man, what was the recovery process like? Uh, I couldn't walk for a little minute, but even then it's like I was limping. They had my leg wrapped up. Man, it was like weird because my leg was looking all funny, all yellow and stuff like that. And uh, I still got the scar. It's healed, though. But it went through my thigh. It went out my thigh and it grazed my calf. The lady was like, it's a blessing that I was so high because I ain't feel it. She did something. She poured some. When I first got there, she poured some on my leg or she pushed some. She's like, do you feel this? She's like, she's like, from one to ten, what's the pain level? I said, zero. She said, oh, yeah, we not about to give him nothing. And they just worked on me like that. That's how high I was. Damn, so they didn't even have to give you no pain medicine. They didn't have to give me nothing. They worked on me just like that. She, I remember her saying it. She said, from 1 through 10, what's the pain level? I said, zero. She said, oh, yeah. She said, it's a good thing you was this high, though, because you probably could have went in a panic attack or anything like that. <laughs> she was like, I would have probably freaked out. But look, I'm like, after I shot myself, I didn't know I did. I'm like, did I? I, I didn't know, but I was gone. I was so gone. But then when I started, I, I put my hand down, and I'm like this. I'm like, bro, I'm bleeding, bro. Damn. Yeah, so they worked on me raw. They didn't need to. How long were you at the hospital? 
Uh, I was there for like, I was there for a day. Then I came back, they fixed, they patched me back up for another day. But I had to always go back and forth, go back and forth. It was tough though, because like I lost so much blood, I get dizzy. And uh, like when I'm walking, I remember performing and I started having, I started having a panic attack because I was moving, I was moving around too much and I, I didn't really had that much blood in me. Man, wild story, man. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, appreciate it. That was a... Uh... That was something, man. I remember, uh, you know, seeing everything. And... I was just, a, like, when I was, because that, that happened when I was probably, like, 22, 23 years old. I was probably, like, I'm 25 now, I'd be 26. So I was, like, 22, 20, I was probably 22 at the time. So it was, like, I was embarrassed. Like, I didn't want to say nothing. But it's, like, man, it's, like, at 20 years old, I get fame, but I just told you how I grew up, my lifestyle. I didn't have no type of guidance. Like 20 years old, I was I got famous while I was my mom kicked me out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and that's what I was saying. Jimmy, as he was taking me to court and everything like that, back and forth, and taking me to clubs, Jimmy, he found out I was homeless because after the club, he had dropped me off. His homie would drop me off. He had dropped me off in this building on 441. And he like, man, why always why why you always have me dropping you off here? He like, where your house at? I'm like, man, I ain't got nowhere to go. And he like you been homeless this whole time? I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, why you ain't tell me a Jimmy? I'm like, what you mean? Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, I'm not the type to just come to you with all my problems. You feel me? Like, I'm just thugging how I'm supposed to. And then, you know, when change comes, it's gonna come. But uh, but I'ma also be honest too. He asked me, so I said something. But I went, you know, and then uh, so he went back to Jimmy. Jimmy found out I was homeless, he took me in. Jimmy took me in, and then we started uh, you know. Uh, getting ideas, shoot. Okay, and and you move, so you move in with Jimmy. You guys start getting ideas for pranks. Yeah, he uh, I moved, he moved me in with his family, man. Yeah, whole whole wife, kids, and all that, man. But that's I got vagabond tatted on my face because shoot, I always lived at everybody else's crib. I felt like I lived at everybody else's crib more than I did my own crib. Friends, different family, foster care, all that. Speaking of face tattoos, you got quite a bit of face tattoos, man. Um, how many face tattoos do you have? I got my whole face covered. My whole face is a rework, though. Because, you know, now that I'm older and everything like that, but I'm like, man, I got to, uh, I got to, I, I care more about my image. So a lot of this is cover up. Do any of them have meanings? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I get the ha-ha from the Joker because I'm like, man, the Joker... You know, he's solid. I like him. Because, you know, that man, he broke it. The Joker broke it, bro. He broke it. And I was broken. I was. I'm not no more. But it's like, uh, I seen the Joker, he broke it. But he always laughed. Now, he may be laughing because he's crazy like that. But, you know, he just always, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, man, I like that. I like him. So I just had the ha-ha's on me. I got misunderstood because I was always misunderstood. You know, people might look at me and think I'm a bad person. But I'm not bad. I had a good heart. I was just trying to survive, you know? And then my survival mode just turned to anger and hatred. So it's like, it's like, I, it's like I'm misunderstood. It's like I want to do good. Like I want to be good, but I'm I'm so used to everybody hurting me. I got to guard up. So it's like, uh, you know, I'm misunderstood. I got vagabond. That means never having a steady place at home. I just told you, I always used to, I was on the streets, sleeping in cars, uh, Never, I never had a stable place at home. You know what I'm saying? Foster care, always moving around, friend to friend to friend, sleeping at other people's houses. Um, let me see what else I got on my face. Uh, I got a heart. It used to be broken, but you know I feel whole. I feel whole again. So uh, I cut. I, I feel the heart up. It used to be guns. It used to be two guns, but I'm like I don't want to walk around with some guns in my face. So I put a broken heart. Because at the time, you know, I was broken. But then when I started feeling better, I patched it up. It's a whole heart. I got a skull. This is just five. They don't really know me into it. It's got two skulls on the side of my face. I just like the way it looks. And then uh, I got the peace sign. Because, man, I'm all about peace and love. Now, nah, I'm all about peace, love, and joy. That's all I'm about. If it ain't if it ain't about that, I don't need you around me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like uh, I got a deck of cards. That one got no meaning to it. It's just five. It just go with the joker thing. And I got an all seeing eye right there in the middle of my forehead. That used to be a crip sign. Uh, when I when I stayed in LA, I was so desperate trying to get on. 
I was like, oh, hey, if I get jumped in the gang out here, then, you know, my music might elevate. So I got jumped in the Crip gang out in L.A. And I put the Crip symbol on my forehead. But I really didn't want to be a part of no gang stuff. And the gang that I was actually in, they felt some type of way that I was never involved in the street stuff that they wanted to be in. Like, I didn't want to be, I didn't get jumped in the gang. Like, I literally got jumped in by four people. So it's like, that's how desperate I was. A lot of people, they, a lot of these other dudes, it's like, see me, I always did my stuff for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was always been real and legit about me. Ain't nothing, nothing, never really been fake. Well, so I started trying to be all this character and stuff like that. But, you know, other people, uh, I don't know. A lot of people, they may be fake gang and stuff, but I literally got jumped in the game. Four people. Uh, what's the name? Um, I remember it was a night where it was in the alley. <clears throat> they like, all right, so you ready? It was a bodyguard, my bodyguard back in L.A., who I met through all them. He was a crip. And I'm like, man, hey, I want to be a crip. They made it seem so cool. I'm like, bro, if I could be a crip, you know, I feel like my music would get better, this and that. Like, I was trying to come up with a plan. He was like, nah, he ain't never want to be. But I pressed him so much about it. He was like, and we, after we got to know each other for a little minute, you know, he had love for me. And he, he was going to be on top of it. So he like, all right, bet. Go ahead. So uh, one night we went to, uh, everybody came. It was everybody. Uh, it was like the whole hood. So we in the alley. Um, what's the name? They like, you ready? I'm like, yeah. And they let me, they let me get the first punch. As soon as I hit them, they all started jumping me. And we, we did that three times. So uh it was like it was like three times for 20 seconds. So um I'm then I'm I'm like I get to a point where I'm like this, I'm getting stumped on, kick, stumped on, punch and everything. And then uh like when we got when we got it over, everybody gave me a hug, they took me around the hood, they was like, this yours now. So uh what's the name? So I started out like trying to be cool with them and everything like that. But then they want to do all these beatings and stuff, to, uh, trying to tell me what to do. Man, listen, nigga, I got a boss mentality. I don't get bossed around. That's why I started this whole thing. I didn't want to work no nine to five. I wanted to be my own boss. I'm like, I don't want to be in this street stuff for real. I'm just trying to do this to elevate my career. But I really got my, I really got myself involved into some gang stuff. So when I went to the beach, the same members, the same dudes, uh, it was like a time went by, but them same dudes who jumped me in the gang, they broke my jaw because they was pissed off that I wasn't, I wasn't involved in, I wasn't involved in their gang like I was supposed to be. And I, and I had to do that with, and I had to deal with that in jail when I got locked up. I had to rep them and everything. I had, I got in a fight in jail and all that. I really got, I, at a young, at 20 years old, 21, 22, I was getting myself in all type of shit, trying to live this famous life and be a celebrity, chase that shit. But I stay at the house and stay in the gym now. I don't give a fuck about that. I stay in the house and stay in the gym. I really put myself through real life shit and almost got myself killed plenty of times chasing this famous shit. I don't give a fuck about being no celebrity, about no Instagram shit. Like, I really live through this. Man, okay. That's, that's a lot to take in. Um, So you get jumped in this gang. Can you say what gang it was? I mean, I can, but I really don't care to. Okay. And and you said at one point they they caught you at at the beach and yeah. they, they so jumped I was, you. I was supposed to be at the beach buying some drugs, and one of the dudes was like, "Hey, the, the gang here, but they ain't tripping. The gang here, but they ain't tripping. It sound like they tripping. They weed. Why you telling me they ain't tripping?" So he like, "Nah, man, you good? Just pull up." So I was supposed to be some buying some perks from. Him. So I pull up. When I pull up, the dude there, uh, one of the dudes walk up on me. He started banging on me. I'm like, boy, I don't give a fuck about who you is, boy. He, he hit me. Pop. Everybody right there. They're like, ooh. Man, come in the back. Come in the back. I'm like, but I'm not going in the back. Yeah, they, they're trying to DP me by the whole gang there and everything on the beach. I'm like, boy, I'm not going in that back. So now we in here politicking. See, it's too many politics for this stuff. But it's like, uh, so now it's, I'm in a circle. We politicking. You know what I'm saying? They trying to get me coming in back. Nah, we not gonna jump you. We not gonna do this. We just gonna catch. We just gonna. You just gonna have to catch the ones one by one. This and that. This and that. This and that. I'm like, boy, I'm not going in the back. So a nigga, he pull out. He said, "You not creeping?" Stole me. My jaw pop out. Huh. I'm bleeding. I run. I run. Like I run away. I run. I go to my car. One of the dudes see me bleeding. Like a dude. I don't even know this man. He like, boom. Hey man, what's going on, man? I got to follow me right now. Who did it? Who did it? Boy, I got to follow me right now. Who did it? I'm like, man, I gotta get out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, man, take my number down. Take my number down. And like, he like, you sure? I got to follow me right now. 
man, what's the name? I'm like, I'll take his number down. I dip. So uh, I called my bodyguard because, you know, it's his people. He, he, he the one who, you know, he put me on and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, man, who did this, man? I start texting him. Bro, I'm, I'm blowing past lights, nigga. I'm blowing past lights. I see the police. I hang out the window. Uh, they pull me over. They call the ambulance and everything like that. They take me to the doctor. Damn. How long did you have your, your mouth wired shut for? Six weeks. Couldn't eat or drink. And then after that, it still hurt because I had my mouth closed for so long, I didn't know how to open my mouth again. That joint was hurt. It took a process. I, I could open it, but it hurt. Man, you know, I, I, I seen a video of you trying to, like, a blender, some McDonald's. But you see, you see, that's the thing about me, bro. It's like as much stuff I've been through, man. I try to find fun in, 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 in all the hurt. You know what I'm saying? But like, I was really hurting, but I try to make some fun out of that. You know what I'm saying? That's just the type of dude I am. I don't really like dwell on all this stuff like that. It ain't gonna make it no better if I dwell on this. That's not gonna change nothing. So I just try to make the best out of it. Yeah, man. Okay, okay. So, so this situation happens, and this is where your bodyguards people. Now, are you officially done being a crip? Was that like... Man, I said that was it. I said that was it. Y'all niggas broke my jaw. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I wanted I wanted to get away from it anyway. I just didn't know how. I didn't know nothing about that. But I said, that's it. Y'all got... You know what I'm saying? Y'all... That's, that's y'all... That's my way out. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, I don't know y'all niggas. I'm not from LA. I only moved down here like trying to chase a dream. Now I'm going home, but it took me a little minute. It took me a little. I, I ain't moved home right away. I was still thugging in L.A., but man, that was it for me. You don't got to tell me nothing. Shoot, somebody, they want me to dip. They're going to have to kill me. But you see, God spared my life. Now, did you hear about other rappers doing this? Yeah, that's why I did it, because I seen other rappers doing it. That's why I did it. Okay, who, who are some other rappers that you seen doing it? Shoot, Soulja Boy was talking about the blood stuff. Chris Brown was talking about the uh. I think blood stuff. I don't know, but all them, uh, was it uh, six nine? All them rappers, they all in group, uh, gangs or whatever. So I'm like, oh, if they if they could do it, then maybe I should do it. That's how I got famous in the first place. I seen one nigga do it, so I did it. So I was trying to, I was so desperate trying to trying to go to the next thing. I was just doing stupid stuff, doing anything to get on. Yeah. Damn. That's crazy. But I was really putting myself through this. You mentioned going to jail. What happens when you go to jail? Man, so when I went to jail, I got tattoos on my face and everything like that. I look just like everybody else in L.A. See, I got tattoos on my face, you know, but I'm like, I'm famous or whatever. These niggas, they real gang members. Now, it's people in the jail who know who's already in there who know I got jumped in the game on the outside. So niggas like, where you from? I'm like, I'm from Florida. But in reality, I'm supposed to rep the gang that I'm in. But I didn't know that. You know, so it's like, <clears throat> me not repping the gang almost got me in trouble. Shoot, the nigga all in my face like, but hey, man, we don't care about that Florida stuff. You're supposed to say you from here first. Then say Florida. Then say, and then I'm like, hey, man, all right, bet. Then so, uh, what's the name? So this one dude, he was a blood. He like, uh, he like, well, Boom Gang said he went from nowhere. He said he from nowhere. I just told him to rep my set. So he came back here. I'm like, man, I ain't say that, bro. He like, oh, he lying on you? He lying, he lying on the homie? Oh, he lying on the homie? So it wasn't that. He wanted to fight. He wanted to fight him. So instead of fighting him, he fought his older homie. And I fought the nigga who was lying. Damn. Okay. Is that the only fight you got in in jail? Yeah. After that, everybody dapped me up and everything like that. Was like, hey, boy, you did your stuff. Boy, you did your stuff. Was this the time in jail where you started to turn your life around? No, this was the time in jail where I met Jesus the first time, the very first time. But even then, I came out living a sinful life because I had an encounter with him, but I really, I was still, you know, I still uh, had, you know, worldly desires, still on a mission, still like, you know, still wanted worldly things. But I fully gave my life to God a year ago when I have a brother, he got shot. He got shot for selling drugs. And my bullet went through his kidney and his liver. He got shot. And when his spirit left his body, he was still alive. And he was in the kingdom of heaven. He was in the kingdom. 
his dad Ben died. His dad was showing them around. This man ain't never grown no beard. This man is selling drugs. This man ain't know nothing about God, but he a whole godly man and, I, and only God could do that. I believe every word he say, especially because I had an encounter with Jesus when I was in jail cell. So I fully gave my life to God. And I was seeking change anyway before I did. I was seeking change because I've been through I've been through so much. I'm like, man, I need something different. I want to be good. I don't want to feel like this. I need purpose. Well, I'm telling you, boy, God gave me purpose, man. I've been through so much. Man, that's that's pretty wild, man. Um, you know, I th I think you were pretty known for doing a lot of drugs. You know, at one point, you went on the No Jumper show, and you actually passed out on the show you know what, what was kind of like your state of mind during those times because i came up to the i came up to the show drunk before i pulled up to the show i was like if i pull up drunk this might go viral so i pulled up drunk but i was too drunk and you know i'm still young bro i'm young now but i was even younger but if i was old if i was as old as adam Man, Adam ain't got no, he ain't got no standards, bro. He ain't got no morals, bro. And he a grown ass man. This nigga about 40 years old. I'm 25 years old, bro. If I was 40 years old, I'd have said, young man, turn around. Go on. We not doing this interview another time. This nigga 40 years old, and he let me walk in that interview like I did, bro. Mm. How, many, how much drugs were you going through at that time? Uh, I was going through a lot. But like I said, like I just told you my life story on how I grew up. You feel me? So I was broken. When I when I took my first pill, I'm like, boy, I feel nothing. I went to sleep, I felt nothing. So I got addicted on it. I'm like, I love this feeling. I love this nothing, this feeling that I have. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm all trapped up in my head. I'm trapped. I'm I got like dark stuff going in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Full of sin, full of wickedness. I'm like, boy, I love this pill. This pill make me think about nothing. I'm in La La Land and I got real addicted to him. It got work, it got bad for me. How much a day would, would you say you were taking? Like four, five. I was popping Zans, I was popping Zans the most. And when I want to have a good time, I pop ecstasy. Damn, okay. You know, did you have a, a relationship with Juice World, Mac Miller or anybody? Nah. How did you feel when you heard about Juice World dying? And you know, I mean, you got Juice World, Mac Miller, you know, DMX, you know, they've all they've all died from a drug overdose, man. You know, and they, you, know, you guys were both in the same entertainment business. You know, what what do you think when you see something like that? Well, then when I saw all that stuff, I just knew I was next. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was waiting on. I was waiting for me to be next. I felt like I had no purpose, but shoot. The guy had a different plan, didn't he? What do you think was like your lowest point? Where you like hit rock bottom and you were like... Well, my after my Instagram got deleted. Because even then, it's like, well, my Instagram, like I was spending my money as quick as I got it. <clears throat> All I got to do is do a promo and I got money. So it's like, if I just spend this little bit, just do another promo, I get more money. When my Instagram got, got deleted, my my source of income got deleted as well. So, uh, 2018, that was, that was bad. Man, I moved home two years ago. When I came home, I came home with $100 in my pocket. $100 and went straight to my baby mama crib. They came back working with my uncle doing pools. So you moved back home 2020, and at this point you have your mindset on making a change? Yeah. Yeah, I had my mindset on making change. I got into this new age religion stuff. Um, you know, uh, I was that was showing me like how to be good, you know, like all this BS. But I had an encounter with Jesus when I was locked up in LA. So I knew Jesus was real, but I didn't I really didn't know like how to build that relationship to him with him. I didn't really didn't know how to how do I get to know him more. I didn't know nothing about that. And I never knew to live my life for him. But look, let me tell you this. When I got into this new age religion stuff, it's like I used to search videos up more and just learn more and more and more. And then they used to say, Jesus is not real. Jesus is the not, he's not the actual son of God. He's the S-U-N son. 
and God is not real. God is the energy waves in the universe. And so, <coughs> so I'm used to like getting caught up in this, get caught up in this. Now, like this new age religion stuff, you know, I'm starting to believe in it. Now I'm starting to grow more. I'm starting to grow, but in the wrong way. You know, I, like it's like it's it's transforming me, but it's transforming me in the wrong way. And it's transform and it transformed my belief from <clears throat> from actual Jesus. So uh but I'm like I'm confused because I know what I went through when I was locked up. Like <clears throat> I had a real encounter with the Holy Spirit when I was locked up. It's like I thought, so now that I'm in this new age religion stuff, I'm like, oh, so that wasn't God. That was probably my ancestor. Because the new age religion stuff teach you to praise your ancestors, pray to your ancestors and stuff like that. So I'm like, oh, so that, that, you know, that, I think that was it, my ancestors. Now, I got a godly man in my jail cell who told me what went down. Oh, that's the Holy Spirit who came to me. He believed everything I told him when I told him how I'm crying out to Jesus and I feel the I, I feel this, just the Holy Spirit just come over me. I That wasn't even my language. Three years ago, that wasn't my language. I'm like, I just feel something that just came over me. You're like, man, that's the Holy Spirit. He believed everything I said. Now that I'm in this new age religious stuff, I'm like, oh, so that was maybe an ancestor. Okay, so I'm still getting caught up into it. Now, I go to Atlanta, and I told you the story where my, my brother, he got shot twice, and he left his body. He came back, he said, God is real. That's all I need to know. I said, okay. So what I did, what I went through, it really was God. Okay. This new age religion stuff is false. It's a lie. And, um, uh, huh, I need to repent. So I went home. I mean, I went in the room. I prayed, asked for repentance. Next day, I got Jesus on my mind heavy because I just realized that I've been following the wrong path. So I got God on my mind heavy. Asking for repentance, but I get filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm filled, I'm driving. I mean, we riding, I'm screaming, I'm crying, I'm repenting, crying. Two months later, in Feb last year, February, I got baptized. Me seeking the new age religion stuff so heavy like that, I'm like, now that I know, now that I have confirmation, God is real, I'm going to put that same energy into him. But then at the same time, it's like, you see, when I was following the new age religion, I was I still wanted more of the world. I still wanted more of the world when I was following the new age religion. But as I got more of God, I didn't care less about the world. I deleted all my social media. The closer I got to God, the less I wanted of the world. And that's the big difference. I wanted more of God. That's the big difference. And that just that just now hit me. That just hit me. How did it feel to get baptized? It felt so good. I just knew I was doing the right thing. Bro, that revelation just hit me, bro. Yeah, I, it felt good, man. I just I just knew I was doing the right thing. I, I felt yeah, I, nice. it was like it was it was it felt so good. Like welcome home. Welcome home, soldier. Welcome home, John. Welcome home. Do you have any advice for kids that might be coming from a place where you were at? Yeah, man, it's like don't lose hope. Cause I was hopeless. It's like look at look at my story, and think about your life. And like, man, God got a purpose for me. I the more I start getting close with God, the more I start connecting pieces in my life. Oh, this was for that reason. Oh, this for that reason. This for that reason. Because as we live in life, we don't know the reason. We can't see it. We don't know the outcome. That's why we gotta have faith. We gotta have faith in God. We gotta have faith. We got to have faith, man. He got purpose. God said his plan is to give you a future and a hope. Man, God, he said the world will pass over before his word, dude. Man, put your faith in God, man. He said everything going to work out for the good. He have a plan. You know, and I didn't know that then. Like I said, I got so much stuff I could be stressed about. But when I think, I'm like, dang, God brought me from this. He brought me from this. He brought me from this. God don't change. He'll bring you from that too. So it's just like, man, if whatever you're going through, kid, adult, just know that God got a plan, man. He have a purpose. He said, but his plan is his, his plan, uh, is his will that all men repent and turn to him. You can't be in or out. You can't be hot or cold. 
it's him or not. You know what I'm saying? But just know that he got a plan. Just go through, go through, go through the process. You see, by me going through my process, I ain't know. But it's like, now I have wisdom. Now I have wisdom. Now, because what I've been through, I can minister to other people. I can relate. God could, I'm even more of a weapon because I can relate. I'm even more of a weapon. So go through what you got to go through, man. You don't never know who you're going to help out in life. You don't know. You don't know who you what what whatever you're going through, half the time, it don't even be for you, it'll be for the next person. God not stingy. <laughs> what I went through went for me, man. It's for the world. How far can you see yourself going with a with religion thing? I mean Yeah, but see it's not about it's not about religion, man. Religion is works. I'm just a man of faith. I believe in God. I believe in God. I have a relationship with God. I don't do nothing about no works. I don't do nothing about no works. She say, have faith in him. It ain't about no religion. Religion, they think if they pray a lot, they can have salvation. If they, if they, you know what I'm saying? If they do good in the streets, they have salvation. Man, salvation is free. Have faith in Jesus. It ain't about no religion. So a, a few rappers in the past ha have been, you know, heavenly into God. You know, mainly the main one that sticks out is Mace. You know, he even became a preacher. Who? Is that some is Mace? Oh, okay, okay. You know, he, he quit rapping. You know, he was like on top of his game, you know, and, and he became a preacher. Is that something you could see yourself doing? You know, uh, probably in the streets. That's where I come from. I can minister in the streets, you know. But uh, really, that's why I'm taking step by step. Because it's like... Honestly, it was hard. It's not going to be easy. It was hard when I gave my life to Christ. Because it's like, I'm still young. You know, I'm, I get, I got saved at 24. I'm 25 now. And it's like, um, <clears throat> when I first got saved, I devoted everything to God. It's like, I had nothing to lose anyway. I didn't risk, I risked my life for this world. I got nothing to lose trying to get my all to God. But in doing that, like I said, I wanted less of the world and more of him. I'm like, dang, what I what I'm gonna do now? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even interested in making music. The woman, I'm I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in this. It's like, how can I have fun in you, Lord? Like, how can I be me? So it was it was real, it was real hard. But I'm I just started growing out of that. I just started know, knowing how to have fun. Like how to, you know, God, he don't want to change you, he wanna change this, your heart. That's what he want to change. He don't want to change nothing about you. He loves you just the way he made you. Everything that you like, you like it because of him. You are a part of him. I'm a part of God. He don't want to try to change nothing. You see, I still talk with slang. You know what I'm saying? I still talk how I do. Still look how I look. He ain't trying to change nothing. He's trying to change his heart. So it's like, nah. It's like, nah, um, nah, I understand. And it's like, I'm still, I'm still growing out of that. I'm taking, but I'm taking it, you know, step by step. Asking God to have patience with me. Have patience with me, Lord, because I'm growing. But I want it. This is what I want. I want him. I want, you know what I'm saying? I want what he want for me. So will I be a preacher? I don't know. You know, if if I feel like if it's in me and God called me that way, then I'm, you know, it's going to be done. But as of right now, I'm in the gym. I'm boxing. I'm boxing, waiting on my next fight. What's the struggle like staying off of the drugs now? Has it been easy? Has it been difficult for you? Nah, it's been easy. It's been easy because it's like this. When you start building a relationship with God, you transform. Things you used to like, you lose an interest in. So it's like, uh, and plus, you know, I've been off the drugs so long, it's like I don't really crave it no more. I crave the gym. I crave some healthy food, you know, like shoot. That's what I crave. Man, I be at home. I don't got no interest in none of that stuff. If it don't mean good to me, bro, I don't want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you got to have discipline, though. You just got to have that type of discipline. And it, like I said, it wasn't easy. Like, I'm not just going to say, like, like I say, I, I didn't just come in walking with God and it been perfect. No, I had my faults. I had my stumbles. But I got a will and a desire to live for God. So when I do fall, I go in repentance and continue seeking him. I fall again, repent, continue seeking him. 
And over time, you keep doing that, you just automatically gonna lose and stuff that been, you know, you've been keep making you fall. You just automatically gonna lose in the interest and stuff that kept making you fall the more. But you gotta pursue God. You, he said, you take one step to him, you take, you know, you get close to him, he get closer to you. You gotta just make that mental decision. I want God, I want God. You fall, you stumble, cool, repent. Jesus understand, he was a, he is God in human flesh. He understand, repent, keep pursuing him. So it was, it was kind of hard, man. It was kind of hard, but this is what I wanted. This is what I want. It's like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Now I have peace. Now I have joy. I actually, I'm, boy, I'm my best version. I'm my best version. I gain more wisdom with him every day. It's like, now I got discipline. People, it's like, I, bro, I wake up and look myself in the mirror. I don't even feel the same. I don't even know who I am, but I'm, I'm growing into the man that God created me to be. You see, my everybody else normal is not is not my normal. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm actually growing into the man that God created me to be. That's why I say you got purpose, she got purpose, she got purpose, he got purpose. We all got purpose. But only God could give you that. Only God could show you that. He created you. So it's like you just gotta have that will. You gotta have that desire to want it. If you want it, you're gonna have it. Definitely, man. Well, John Gabbana, man, dude, this was an incredible interview, man. Your story is, you know, really something special from... This ain't no coincidence, bro. This guy's work. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, your story is, is, you know, just from where you were to where you're at now, man. It's good to see you doing good. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Definitely, man. And, you know, I, I definitely appreciate you, you know, taking the time, you know, sharing your story you know, uh, everything you've been through, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just a really, uh, you know, it's an incredible story, man. I appreciate it, man. I got a documentary coming out called I Am John Gabbana. Man, I got people who put a lot of, man, helping that, man. I've been receiving therapy. Listen, bro, when I gave my life to Christ, doors been closing, other doors been opening, and I've been receiving healing. God bring healing. Bro, even talking to you like this is healing because I don't really talk to nobody like that. I needed this. Opening up for me. Brings healing. God bring healing, man. Bring healing, bro. I'm trying to tell you, boy, this fire, boy. This is fire. This is all God's work. Man, this is healing for me. Well, man, I'm glad. I'm glad I could help. You know, it, it was a dope story, man. And um, you know, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I appreciate it too. I gotta go to training though, honestly. For real, I got training. <laughs> Five. Alright, bro. Thank you again, man. Alright, man. I appreciate it, Ken. I appreciate you. Definitely. Take care, man. Yes, sir.